King Hassan of Morocco once said that Morocco was a tree with its roots in Africa and its branches in Europe. If you closely look at Morocco's geographic location, it is perched on the fringes of Africa, Europe and the Arab world. An argument could be made that Morocco sits half in and half out of them all. It is an Arab state, but half of its population speak either Berber or French as their mother tongue. It is African, but for three decades was estranged from the Organization of African Unity after it quit the continental body in protest in 1984 when the bloc recognized the independence of the disputed territory of Western Sahara, which is regarded by Morocco as part of its historic territory. Until 2017, Morocco was the only country in Africa that was not a member of the African Union. But following intense campaigns by Morocco's King Mohammed VI to rejoin the bloc, saying at one point that Africa is my home and I'm coming back home, Morocco rejoined the bloc after a 33-year-long absence. The decision came at the annual meeting of the African Union in Addis Ababa, its headquarters, where 39 of the African Union's 54 member states agreed to allow it back in the fold, despite stiff resistance from countries such as South Africa and Algeria over the status of the disputed former Spanish colony. After a tense debate, it was decided to leave the question of the disputed territory for another day and resolve it with Morocco back in the family. And so Morocco rejoined the African Union, reportedly with an ulterior motive, with the hope that being inside the AU would bring it diplomatic gains against Western Sahara and allow it to lobby against Polisario Front's interests. So that's enough context, now let's jump into the juicy stuff. You see, much of the last century, Morocco's policies were decided not in Rabat, but in Paris and Madrid, which is part of the reason why in 1987, Morocco applied to join what was then the European Economic Community, the precursor to the European Union. The application was immediately rejected on the grounds that Morocco was not considered to be a European country and therefore could not join. Unfazed, the country kept lobbying member countries to support its bid to be European. This went on until the early 2000s, with Morocco renewing its campaign several more times despite assured rejection. During his state visit to France in the year 2000, Morocco's new king Mohammed VI pressured Paris to lobby for establishment of a new relationship between the EU and its southern neighbor. According to him, the timing was perfect as his country stood a good chance following the acceptance of Turkey's eligibility in 1999. But what the king failed to consider is that Turkey's location as a transcontinental nation at the crossroads of Europe and Asia makes it a country of significant geostrategic importance to Europe. Istanbul is the biggest city, and although part of it is situated in Turkey's Asian territory, it is considered the most popular city in Europe. Also, despite the fact that the vast majority of Turks, however, live in the Asian part of the country, at least the country, compared to Morocco, has some of its territory in Europe. Even so, to this day, Turkey does not have full EU member status. It has been long rumored that many Europeans look suspiciously at a Muslim nation's entry into what remains a Christian club. European politicians often see Morocco as a source of illegal migration, spices, hashish and cheap labor. But from Morocco's perspective, the division of the world into two separate blocks of Africa and Europe looks artificial. Separated from Europe by the Strait of Gibraltar, a mere 14 kilometer wide, Morocco's economic and strategic interests are firmly rooted in the countries to the north. At one point in the 1980s, former King Hassan had a plan for construction of a bridge across the strait to bring it closer to Europe, but it never materialized. 
The EU remains Morocco's biggest trading partner and is a key customer for its manufactured goods and agricultural produce. French and Spanish tourists account for nearly half of all tourists visiting Morocco in a typical year. Nevertheless, the EU also benefits from this relationship, as Morocco has become fundamental in essential areas for the Union, such as counter-terrorism cooperation and migration control. Indeed, for an African country, Morocco is closer to its Western partners than to its neighbors in the Middle East and North African region and the rest of Africa as a whole. Obviously, this is not the same for the European Union. Despite its interest in the southern neighborhood, the plans developed for the region have always been of limited ambition compared to Morocco's larger-than-life ambitions. Many analysts have concluded that the European Union is a closeted Christian-majority state organization, which is the main reason for Turkey never managing to get full membership status. It is important to see what are the factors necessary for a country to qualify for EU membership, that is, if it respects the criteria laid down by the Treaty of the European Union in the form of the Copenhagen Criteria. The most important ones are four, political criteria, which means rule of democracy, respect of human rights and protection of minorities. Second, economic criteria, which means the country should have a functional market economy with the capacity to cope with competitive pressure and market forces within the union. Next, monetary criteria also known as Euro Convergence. This criteria requires all member states to adopt the Euro currency eventually. In addition, several other conditions like inflation, debt to GDP ratio and budget deficit must be considered. Finally, we have Geography. The country must be geographically located in Europe. This point is the most controversial of all since there is no correct way to define the geographical boundaries of the European continent. I mean, just look at any map. Where does Europe end and where does Asia begin? There are no large natural water bodies that separate the two, which is why some geologists consider Europe and Asia as one continent, Eurasia. However, I think it is safe to assume that despite all the grey areas about Europe's continental boundary definition, that it is unquestionable that Morocco does not reside in Europe. Hypothetically, if in the future the geographical criteria is relaxed for everyone, including African countries, there are many nations like Australia, Japan, South Korea, and even the United States that become automatically eligible for EU membership. I'm not saying that they want to do so, but hey, who knows? From the time of the Roman Empire, Morocco's history has been interlaced with Europe's. For instance, in the 12th and 13th century, Spain was ruled from Morocco. And today, the kingdom has often been seen as a force for good in a troubled region, a mildly authoritarian monarchy. Since King Mohammed VI's ascension to the throne in 1999, much of Morocco's foreign policy shifted from ambitions of joining the European Union and directed toward securing international recognition for its claim over the Western Sahara. Before former U.S. President Donald Trump left office, he unilaterally recognized Moroccan sovereignty over the entire territory in exchange for the normalization of relations between Morocco and Israel. The European Union did not follow suit. You see, to a large extent, the international community viewed the Trump administration as an anomaly and saw its major decisions as temporary ones that would be eventually rolled back when a more traditional president entered the White House. This made Morocco willing to pursue other ways to try and bend the European Union to its will. 
In the past few years, Morocco has started to use its increasing leverage on security and migration to demand better deals and greater economic cooperation from Europe. A clear example of this can be noted in the migrant crisis that took place in 2018 when an unprecedented 12,000 migrants crossed into the Spanish territory of Ceuta through the deliberately unattended Moroccan border due to a dispute between the two countries. By allowing thousands of migrants to cross into Spain, Morocco was not just punishing Madrid for its stance on Western Sahara, it was also taking a page out of Turkey's diplomatic book. In that case, as a control of illegal migrants from Syria into Europe, thus Morocco signaled to the EU that it too was prepared to use migrants as a pressure mechanism. There you go guys, I would like to thank our great supporters on Patreon, whose generous contributions allow us to keep creating more high quality content. If you'd like to know more about the migrant crisis and why Europe's most secure border is in Africa, please click on this video on your screen. If you'd like to help out with the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash reasonafrica. That's patreon.com slash reasonafrica. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.